What's up guys, welcome to another episode of Digital Art with Jesus Conde and today we're going to be painting the Blue Ranger or his name Billy uh, from the Mighty Morphin Power Rangers and let's get started so the first thing as you guys know is to have uh, lots of reference um, in this case just to know what has been done or the things that I like about the character or uh, the things that I shouldn't do, for example, <laughs> the one on the bottom left from the last of movie. Even that I uh, that I even though I like the movie, the designs of the suit uh, I wasn't really a fan of them. So um, as you can see, I'm just sketching things up really, really uh, rough. I'm I'm not thinking about how clean I'm being with the idea. I'm just trying to get the shapes that I think that will be better and I'm not worried at, about at all in terms of the quality of the drawing um, more uh, about the quality of the idea that I want to do <coughs> um, I wanted to find like a middle thing between the original design and something on the last movie um but i, I didn't want to push it that far so kind of like a, a balance uh, more towards the original version of it but something that i didn't like about the original one is the horns that look to the front um, i always thought i don't know why they did it like that i guess um it could break or it will look too much like a demon or something um, but for me, I thought it would be cool to have them like just pointing out uh, to the front or to the top, um, or pointing up. So, <clears throat> yeah, that was the main reason why I did those looking like that. Um, other thing is to have in mind that I'm just doing it from the chest up. I'm not doing any arms or anything. So that's an advantage in terms of time. If it was a full body, I will obviously spend way more time doing these guys. And it wouldn't be that quick. But I really like that. And as you can see, I'm constantly using the deform tool, the sorry, the grab tool to modify that shape um, so that I just I can just find something more interesting. Uh, right now I divided the window on three parts, so I have uh, the version at the size that I like to draw uh, at the right I have the size that I should be looking at things like really far away to see if that, um, the shapes read well and all that and at the left I got my references still you have to keep them all the time in there so I'm painting with a really really small line uh, as you guys can see <laughs> pretty easily um, and I'm not too worried about line weight at this point. Uh, I will address that later with the with a, with a um, bigger brush. But at this moment, I'm just trying to clean or to draw better the sketch that I did before. Basically, just making up the line art of it. Um, one thing to keep in mind is that I'm doing this because. First of all, I would like to draw more. I feel like I'm not drawing too much lately and I need to uh, get back at it. And also, once I have the, the drawing done, it's way more easy for me to paint something. Like, uh, it really takes out uh, the pressure of what should I, um, like, uh, what, what shapes to paint or trying to define the shape with painting which is not bad uh, I know a lot of people do, do it like that and it works for them but for me I feel like when I do this process of making the liner first um, my ideas are better like I don't think too much in terms of shape more like more in terms of lines uh, if that's, if that's a, a thing um, so that's really important for me <clears throat> I also believe that if you give yourself this room 
to explore the idea before painting when you do the painting uh, you get to do like um, like a better version of it just because you were thinking about the painting where you were drawing like you were thinking about a lot of stuff uh, you are you are also solving a problem at the time you're first you're solving the problem of the shape and then you're gonna solve the problem of the shading the color and all that so right now I'm just trying to solve the color of the shape so um, just focusing on that I get uh, this kind of a uh, sense of uh, achievement that I did something the right way that I'm happy with the shape at the at this point so I don't need to change any of that so the next step is coloring now that's another problem now I can solve that problem uh, alone without thinking about the shape obviously when you're painting uh, the shape becomes more important the shading because you will define um, it will define the shape uh, three-dimensionally I mean how it looks right now I'm adding a little bit of shadows here and there like if they were cast shadow or something and volume shadows do but very sketchy I wanna keep that sketchy look so that's why I'm trying to do it like that um, which is very uh, sometimes it is time-consuming but I think the result it's, it's it's good so I'll keep doing it like that like it doesn't matter <clears throat> also because of what I said before like having this uh, time to do these shapes like that um, makes it way easier to to later apply the colors to it like it's way more fun <clears throat> obviously there are some parts that I need to fix here and there that's always going to happen you're gonna have stuff that you're gonna need to to be fixing all the time and you can never like ex escape that that's always going to be a thing <clears throat> And you you are you have to constantly be aware of where the light is coming from and, and all the stuff that you've been doing in terms of shading. Like, it, does it look consistent to to what I was doing? For example, this this kind of like little line um, pattern uh, obviously is not something new, but it's something I kind of enjoy doing. Uh, for some reason, there's something about it that I like. Uh, to develop the image uh, this way so <clears throat> and what else can I tell you guys like this is a this is a long process I know uh, some somehow uh, it w didn't look that uh, slow I think is because I did some sketches first uh, another day I was I was doing some sketches on paper um, but there was another day, like a week earlier or something. And because I already gone through that process of designing it, like kind of uh, finding those shapes that I like, um, then I can jump to this tool and do it ba uh, right away. Even that it's not the same angle, it's not the same uh, position of the face of those first sketches that I did on paper. Even that, even though um, it wasn't that, um, it turned out pretty easy to to do the design. But I guess, um, I mean, that's a very simple reason, I think. For all the thinking that I did, uh, I did it before, like a week earlier, and catch it on paper. <clears throat> and right now I'm using two colors different from the from the clothing to the helmet and I'm trying to leave here I'm trying to leave some white parts where I think the specular reflection is going to be like the highlights of it 
um, but that's something just to to keep in mind it's not like it's going to be literally that like that it's just to keep my mind with the with that target like I gotta I gotta hit this uh, feeling of it kind of um, obviously it changes uh, if you saw the, the image at the beginning it, it doesn't look like this but it's kind of a, a guideline Here I'm using a little purple to to identify that there's some kind of a reflectiveness to the reflectiveness to the material. Um, so it's catching some kind of a um, really uh, like a warmer blue color. Uh, it's turning out to be a little bit a little bit uh, purple, and <clears throat> that reflectivity. Um, it's uh, sometimes it's hard to do uh, for some reason I think I, I got it f kind of from working a lot with 3d like I got used to looking at things about how the reflections worked when I when I do like shiny materials and stuff like that and because of that rendering again and rendering again things here and there I got that kind of um, understanding if you can call it that <laughs> of how reflections kind of work not like s super accurate but most of um, uh, for what I've seen some people struggles with it um, and I, I think so like I don't struggle that much but it's not like like, like they do perfect or anything but um, it's kind of um, it's not that hard uh, to be honest when, when I do them <clears throat> or the specular, like how soft the specular should be, how hard, depending on the material, all the stuff. So in this case, I'm trying to to open that um, range of those uh, highlights and also trying to normalize a bit the color blue because the one on the helmet was looking too different from the one on the suit. So I'm working on that. And constantly adding um, more difference between the light and shadow so we can have this uh, value change like from light to dark and create that sense of uh, three-dimensionality on the object Here is something also that I was um, kind of trying to go for um, with the I, I didn't I didn't I wanted to look like serious I didn't want to look cartoony or anything but I I also didn't want it to look um, hyper realistic if that makes sense I wanted to people to see it and immediately of course that's a painting and that's is no one is hiding the fact that it's a painting is should look like a painting it shouldn't look photoreal um, to me at least that's the way I see it I mean I like when things look painterly but if it's obvious that it's a painting I think it's way cooler for some reason I don't know um, there's something about the painting in, that looks photoreal that it's almost like if, if it was a um, like um almost like if it was a retouch picture or something <laughs> I know a lot of time is not the case but uh, for me sometimes when I see when I see it like that it does it does look like that and <clears throat> yeah here I'm trying to add some some so that blue color to the neck but it doesn't really work out much so I end up erasing <laughs> now I'm adding some really lighter blue more saturated um, lines to give that uh, sense of like texture to the image some reinforcement there of, of the highlights with some white 
lines and trying to find that glue that I was telling you guys to make it look more like a painting instead of a, a cool drawing so it, I want it to be kind of obvious that it's a painting it's like making mistakes on purpose that's the way I see it like sometimes you put a light here that it doesn't look like 100% correct but it does make sense because you know it's a painting so I mean it can it can um, it can get away with it just because it's a painting <clears throat> from this point on it's more like um, trying to to add some texture to it and really going back to making it look more like a drawing um, I've been trying to do that kind of result lately to make it look more like a like a drawing or a painting instead of so much uh, digital but it's just me trying uh, things it's not like something it's not like some trend or anything <clears throat> And rendering like this with these little lines um, I don't know it I find it quite uh, relaxing sometimes so it's very useful for that uh, but it also makes me feel like I'm controlling controlling it more the is that that kind of a sensation to it here I'm trying uh, some ideas with the levels but unsuccessfully I don't really like how it looked uh, when the when I change the levels, um, especially on the part on the gray part, it looked a, a little bit yellowish when I did that. And at this point, I'm trying to find uh, these little things that I can fix here and there that will make the image better. And why not trying something completely? Um, and different in terms of proportions um, just to test things out but I didn't uh, end up choosing that so this is it this is the final result of the image I really hope you like it and see you next time guys thanks for thanks for your support